Hey guys, what's up? So this is going to be a quick video in which I'm going to show you how you can run your own Zabbix server, the full monitoring tool, open source, free to use on your true NAS scale system. So basically your NAS can become also a home and a server for a free monitoring software, which then you can use to monitor the true NAS scale itself and perhaps some external services or some other features and, and devices from your home lab. To make this happen, what you need is, well, basically the recent version of the TrueNAS scale, just because starting with the version Electric Eel, it is possible to run Docker containers, the native ones in your TrueNAS scale system. Before that, it was possible to do that only with the Helm charts. So in theory, it was possible to run your Zabbix server, but it was way more complicated. So when you are logged in, to your TrueNAS scale, you need to go to the apps and the first thing, the native one without the containers that you have to install is the docg. This is the one where you will be running Docker containers. To install it, you just need to go to discover apps, search for docg and just click install. It's not going to require any kind of customization or whatever. So when that is done, before actually going and uh, spinning up the Zabbix container, we need to think about where our database is going to be located because we're running the Docker file. So we're talking about the volumes and uh, it's not a good practice to run a Zabbix database uh, stored in the container itself just because it can grow pretty big and overall it's not a good thing to have. So what you should go should do is go to the data sets where you will have the directory for your docg and just create a new um, data set for the Zabbix database. Here I created it, it's a generic one. Again, no customization, you can play around with the permissions just to secure it a bit more, but default settings are gonna work. When this is done, we can go to the apps, we need to go to the docg, we need to go to web UI, which is gonna open a new page, and this is the place where you can spin up your containers. As you can see, my Zabbix is already running and I can show you like here it is. Uh, everything is working fine, but basically you just need to click compose. And then here where you write your Docker commands, you need to run this, which I've also shared with you so that you don't need to write everything down in my Patreon and link to the Patreon is going to be in the description so you can just copy paste everything. So what we're doing here is we're starting Postgres service, so Postgres container, and it's going to be used for our Zabbix as a backend database. Then we're running the Zabbix server itself. Uh, we're running the Zabbix web, so the graphic user interface, and also the Zabbix agent so that we can monitor everything on our TrueNAS scale itself. And remember, we just created a data set. So we specified here under the volumes for our Postgres database. So everything that's going to be inside the database is actually going to sit not in a container itself, but in our data set on our NAS server. So that's also kind of protected from all the bad stuff that can happen. So what you need to do is just copy paste this and paste it here. This will show you all of the containers that are going to spin up. Zabbix Agent, Zabbix Web, Zabbix Server, Postgres. Uh, here we can see that the volume is attached with the data set that we just created. Variables, this is something that you can specify. And give me a second to show you uh, what kind of variables there could be for the Zabbix server. Uh, let me search Zabbix Docker images. Let me move it here. Zabbix server. And here is the full list of all available environment variables. Like if you need to fine tune your Zabbix installation, like add some more trappers, uh, polars, whatever, you basically just copy paste this uh, environment variable to your docg where you are creating um, your Zabbix server and paste it to the dot envir environment variables um, location. Let's call it like that and just change the value that you need. Then you will have to save and deploy your system. So when it's deployed, I'm going to quit this one because I already have my running. You will have it like this. In this place, you will have an option to see all of the logs from your containers. The only thing is that uh, all of the containers are writing here. Like here is the log line from the Zabbix server, from the Zabbix web. There's also going to be something from the database and from the agent. Here is uh, Compose YAML that I am running. 
and uh, that's basically it so i am also specifying that my front end uh here it is is uh tied to the port 8080 because i cannot use the default 80 because on a default 80 we have a true nest scale so the ip address is going to be the same as on a true nest scale but with a port 8080 we can access our Sabix frontend, in which I already have my host, Sabix server, which is basically the same TrueNAS scale host. And if we will go to the latest data, we can see that we are already monitoring, as example, the memory. And you can monitor anything like the CPU usage, some disk status. It's basically just a regular server that you are monitoring with your Zabbix. And you can also freely uh, create a new host, monitor something external, monitor some routers as your home, some switches, other devices, other servers. And uh, if you do that, well, as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, basically your true NAS scale uh, NAS server becomes also a server for your Zabbix. Of course, make sure that uh, capacity of the true NAS in terms of memory and CPU that you have on it is actually sufficient to run your Zabbix. If you're running, if you're monitoring just a couple of the hosts, it's not going to be a problem. But if you are extending your monitoring system and monitoring like tens, hundreds, thousands of different hosts, different data, then perhaps you will need to take a look on the resource usage of your NAS server. So that's basically it, how you can spin up Zabbix server on a true NAS scale. If you have any questions about this, just let me know in the comments. I will try to answer them and uh, hope you found this useful. Thank you guys for watching. See you later.